an honour to be here again. I spoke last year at CIFA as well at the Equality and Diversity session. There I was talking about my role as a Fairness, Inclusion and Respect Ambassador when I was working for a company called Wessex Archaeology. Um, a lot has happened in my world in the last 12 months and sadly I'm no longer with Wessex. I got given a, a golden career opportunity and I, I did grasp it and I moved on. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about where I've moved on to in the next slide. But the reason why I wanted to come and talk about the way I'm talking about it today is obviously we're talking a lot about inclusion in archaeology and heritage. I'm coming at it from a slightly outside perspective now. I'm going to come and talk to you about how it works in a different setting entirely. Um, I'm actually not going to use the word archaeology an awful lot in my talk either, um, but it will hopefully at the end all the background what I am trying to say. Um, so hopefully this will work. Yay! Okay, so I now represent a company called WSP. What is or who is WSP? Well, they're one of these multinational engineering companies, okay, and there are more than just WSP, there are a lot, you know, other, other engineering con consultancies are available. Um, it's a lot larger than Wessex, um, I've got 250 people there now, I'm now part of a team of 42,000 people uh, across 550 offices in 40 different companies. Uh, countries. In the UK, there are 7,000 employees across 36 offices, employing engineers, technicians, scientists, architects, planners, uh, environmental specialists, which is where I fall in, and last but not least, from my point of view, the supporting services, so HR, IT, administration. Um, so I fall into the environmental specialist, so I work in a multidisciplinary team with ecologists, um, air quality control officers and things like that. Um, being a company of that size, and like any old good company, do, they do have an equality, diversity and inclusion policy. I don't want to dwell on this too much because it's fairly standard stuff, but I thought it would be worth sharing some of the things that they bring out. Um, within their policy, uh, they look to um, protect those under, which who are identified, sorry, under UK legislation as having the protected characteristics. And those are the protected characteristics under the Equality 2010 Act. But actually WSP go a bit further than that, and they protect these as well. They've identified and pulled these out. Um, sorry if it's a bit small at the back. If you want a copy of this at the end, I can send it all around. And I quite like the fact that it's gone a bit broader than the standard, personally. Um, they also, in their policy, actually seek to define these terms, equality, diversion and inclusion, and they also define discrimination as well. And they go even a bit further with that, because they actually describe discrimination in four different forms. So they identify that you can get discriminated directly. I mean, here's an example. So here is the seek applicant for a senior post. You turn your page over, and then you lose it. Um, it's not appointed because he might not fit in with that, that concept of what we want. Indirect, so the idea is you need to have some quality or qualification to do a job, even though actually they can vote. Uh, Victimisation, apologies for the rogue Z in here. What I should have said at the beginning was WSP is actually a Canadian company, so sometimes the spelling is a little bit Americanized in these policies. Um, they also define what they think is harassment. And then, interestingly, thus at the bottom, you might not be able to see it, there is a line in the policy which states that, in addition, individuals can be subject to the above based on perception or association. So if they believe that the individual has a characteristic and they associate the group. So you don't actually have to prove it like that. Why do they care? Well, they see... I think I actually found myself on here. There we go. WSP recognised that to actually have a good and strong workforce, you need a broad and inclusive workforce as well. And these words in here are ones that you'll hear time and time again when you see these sorts of documents. So the idea is the effectiveness of employees to boost recruitment and retention and to develop their own brand. Um, it's their approach, therefore, that values and the differences each individual brings, you know, employees, customers and to the clients. It entails recognising, accepting and respecting people whatever way they are different. And again, about harnessing those differences to make a stronger whole. Why do they believe it's important? Well, engineering and construction has a bit of a problem. 
It's one of the most in-demand jobs in the world and they cannot recruit enough going forward. It was recognised quite a long time ago that they're going to struggle to actually maintain an effective workforce in this country. And at the moment they're saying they need to double the number of graduates and apprenticeships entering the industry every year and they are not meeting those targets. They also have another problem as well in that they're missing out on a good group of people who could be recruited into this industry in the first place. It's a very much male dominated. So this is the, the um, statistic that was brought out in the gender pay report that was published recently that indicate that only 25% of graduates in science are female and in engineering it's just 14%. So there's a huge gap there that they can fill. Um, it's a bit more about just why they care. So ensuring a balance of talented people. And the idea is that this is actually within the growth strategy document that was just published from WSP as well. So it's in there, in this document that's talking about how they're going to be brilliant and all the different industries they're going to move into. They have got this section in there that everybody had to read and we had to demonstrate that we read it as well as every member of the staff. So in that is going to build on their EDI strategy to develop a targeted approach to better uh, achieve a better balance of men and women in the business. It's important to say that we're not just going to focus on the gender balance. They are looking to improve equality and diversity across the board, but for now, their main target is the gender uh, issues. <clears throat> they have an EDI steering group. Apologies, I'm going to stop saying equality, diversity, inclusion now and go drop down to the acronym EDI. Um, <clears throat> first thing that this steering group is going to do is identify additional opportunities where the company can be more inclusive, identify and uh, provide recommendations on improvement between the different groups, so actually be looking at all the things that are happening and make their recommendations, seek annual improvements in workplace equality index reporting by sustainability report, so keep looking at the, the, uh, the figures and keep on top of reporting them and mark any improvements. This is also quite important to make sure that what we're doing in WSP is actually working with other sectors that we're working with. So Network Rail and Highways England are one of our main um, clients. So we need to work within them and their strategies as well. We're going to talk a little bit more about Highways England stuff towards the end. And then finally, communicate to people the commitment to EDI as well. Actually not just keep it within, but actually try and embed it in every stream of work that we do. Um, so that's helping to support in the business, deliver that and implement the communication plan. Oh dear, some more objectives. So, make it a requirement for our suppliers to adhere to our EDI policy. Again, quite an important prospect. If you're going to come and work with us, we want you to work our way. We want you to have the same core values that we have. Um, and the same token, we also have to pay into the core values of the clients that we represent as well. So I was England being the main one here. Um, here's one, uh, deliver unconscious bias training for all leaders, managers and recruiters. And that's something that I know, I'm going to look at Hannah here, that, we're trying, that the Equality and Diversity Group is trying to set up because it's very important. I keep meaning to sit through the training on this actually and I haven't managed to do it yet. The other thing as well is provide a career development training to support people once they come into the role and slightly differently from the other, but provide mentor training and support as well. So get somebody hooked up with an individual to help them through. Target recruitment from underrepresented groups, particularly for large projects when it can sustain it. Again, this is a lot about ret uh, retention as well. The staff demonstrate and provide clear career paths for our people. Monitor promotions and identify any barriers to the gender pay parity. Quite a hot topic at the moment, that one. And then continue to undertake community outreach initiatives such as Launchpad, I'll come back to Launchpad in a minute, to encourage women and those in minority groups to take up STEM careers in the first place. And there's three key objectives that WSP are working for at the moment. The first one is they want to double the proportion of women on the apprenticeship intake to 30%, which says to me that at the moment it's 15%. They want to up the proportion of women in the graduate intake by a quarter to 40% by 2020. 
And the last one, have 20% of senior leadership direct roles held by women. It's all very good to say it, but how do you do it? Well, the first thing is you need the people in the jobs in the first place. You actually need to be recruiting women and people from these minority groups through. So what they've got, they've got this thing called Launchpad. Now, Launchpad is a sort of project, it's an activity, but it's also something that's hosted on the intranet as well at work and on the SharePoint system. And anybody in WSP can access the information off Launchpad, and there is, it's really nice. I like it. The point of Launchpad is to support engagement with students under the age of 19, to inspire them in the first place into STEM, as in science, technology, engineering and maths careers. The three approaches to it are to provide a bunch of materials and guidance to anybody who wants to access it so they can deliver a STEM activity. You can go into a school or college and do something with this. There's also a really good system of work experience placements out there and shows you how to actually host a work experience place. And actively encouraging people to build engagement with schools. Uh, the, the guidance is given on that, including how to do your safeguarding and issues like that around it. Uh, WSP, like a lot of engineering consultancies like that, is we have um, two volunteering days we can give over every year. We're paid, that's where we're paid to go and do something outside of the company. And this is one thing we really encourage people to do. Um, if you go onto the site, you can see it looks a bit like this. So it contains loads of different information. It's a library of information and it gives you an activity record to do it. And the idea is that you're collaborating. <laughs> well, it was worth for this, this conference. On there, you can then find lots of activities that people have already done and trialled and delivered so far. So this one on this side is one for sort of a slightly younger age group bridge building activity and then you've got one on the other side which is more geared towards an A-level side. Um, I found this on there as well and you know when you get a really good idea that you just want to shove into a report but you can't quite work out where you're going to fit it. I wanted to put this in as the best place for it. Um, as well as trying to buy in to encourage students that they want to take up STEM careers, they recognise that they also need the parents to be on board with this career choice as well. So they try and bring out a lot of information like this, and I'd, I'd be interested to try if you do one, to attain great reason to become an archaeologist. Mm. Um, it'd be interesting to see. I'm not sure how you have been demand, and I'm not sure if we've travelled the globe. Point number three, what do you reckon? <laughs> Are we going to get any more? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So maybe next year I'll come back with my ten great reasons to become an archaeologist. Um, Anybody who's hosted work experience will know that they're great things to do, but they take a lot of work. And then you're suddenly presented with a young person who wants to learn something and needs to do something, and you're still trying to do your everyday job at the same time. You're perhaps jealous to find out there's 20 pre-prepared modules on this of varying length and complexity to deal with, you know, to present to the individual student to do, including down to a mock interview at the end. As I say, oh, um, also encouraged to spend time in school as well. The idea is you pick up your local school and you create a relationship with that school and they want you to log that relationship back onto Launchpad, see which schools other people are dealing with and just create those hubs and just try and inspire people that to go into this, go into this industry. Uh, the other branch as well is once you've got the staff in, you need to retain them, you need to let them grow and develop and actually promote them into leadership. And WSP has this programme called Women in Leadership. Yes, I have signed myself up to it. <laughs> First thing I did, actually. After I got my work last year through the doors. Um, it's, uh, it's fairly young, it's only been established since 2015, and it's actually open to everybody. You don't, you don't actually have to be a woman to join the Women in Leadership programme, you're pleased to know. Uh, and actually, you, you, it doesn't matter where you are in your career, you can join this network. And it is a network, so the idea is that it organises internal and external networking events, working within the office with the location office director, so you can get hooked up with people in your office or in your discipline and work alongside them. Oh, it's a daisy. <laughs> Better rock on, right. Um, so, yeah, to wrap through this, take an active role in time, uh, entries for um, national awards, facilitate a mentoring and buddy system. Again, developing a library of flexible working stories so people can share and be um, inspired by what people have done. 
and to actively encourage women to apply for promotion. And it looks beyond just what the WSP system have done, so it is tying in with lots of other initiatives that are up and running. So this is the uh, Women in Science and Technology and Engineering group. They uh, were ahead of the game, so we've tied, in, we've tied into their 10 step program. I um, haven't got time to go into any steps, but it's again, it's the same thing. It's making yourself, making sure you've got a baseline information, making sure that it's, everyone's on board with it, it's coming from the leadership down, um, challenging mindsets, by, you know, bias and sexism, that bit's about making sure you've actually got a work environment that somebody wants to work in, so tackling issues like banter <coughs> in the workplace, and we all know the difficulties with that in terms of language spoken. And being creative in job design, if you've designed a job that's been occupied by men, centuries, you're going to create a new job spec which is geared up for men, not for, that's going to be suitable for all. So trying to break down that mould. <coughs> Sponsorship and bullying and mentoring all the way through as well, getting people hooked up with people who can help them and break down these walls. They're also um, collaborating with women in transportation and that again is where you're promoting women through for awards for recognising work well done and business in the community helps as well. So these are all networking things that are happening. So WSP isn't just looking internally, it's looking externally at these different work programmes as well. Um, there are another other initiatives they've got to try and when they've got the staff on to keep them on and help them grow. There's the Professional Growth Network, which is for early starters. Um, saying that, I've actually got more than 10 years career experience, but I've actually put myself into that programme as well because I'm new to this environment and I'm trying to learn my way through it, so nobody's asked me, and there's no barriers to it. And another thing actually that I'm also personally doing is the Strengthening Project Leadership Training Programme too. If you work all the way through that, you end up with a qualification at the end of it. Um, it's not quite what I need at the moment, but I keep an open mind on that one. Um, and there's other groups within the company as well, so this is Vibe, so this is the LBGTQ group. Um, Anyone again can join, and you can join transparently, or you can join very much on your private mailing list as well. Rattling through to the end, I mentioned that we also do a lot of work to support Highways England and their supplier diversity. Now, Highways England are a national body, so they have to have their public sector equality diversity plan in place. We have to help them with that. They've broken it down into three different sections. The first thing they're looking for is their promotion for customers and communities that they are serving in terms of their road network. And they, they've done that by doing, trying to advocate open engagement, going to the customer and saying, what do you want from us? What do we need to do when we are planning at these schemes? And then running some pilot schemes attached to that to see the success of it. They also have great demands on the supply chain. So to even be on a Highways England the framework in the first place, you have to go through quite a rigorous pre-qualification process and then they come back and they check you are still adhering to that as well. Um, in my case, I have to fill in quite a lot of questionnaires as I'm going through different schemes and projects to see, to, for them to check who I am, who I represent and what do I know about what I'm doing. Um, and then they're also looking to recruit and retain their own staff as well, which I won't go into because that's particularly in Highways England. Their, this is quite an interesting document they've got for their um, objectives for 2016 to 2020. It is available on the internet, and if you want to, I can share that link with you. Where are we going? Conclusion. Oh, the word heritage has appeared. Um, I think we all agree that there's a lot we need to do in heritage. There's a lot we need to go out and need to do, but we're not alone. We are not the only industry that needs to sort this out. And we have got so much to gain through doing this collaborative uh, approach. I hope it's come across in what I've said so far is that WSP have got all these different systems and things, but they're not keeping it internal, they're going external, they're tapping into this resource here and that resource there. They're also sharing a lot and making sure that all that information is pulled together and then anybody can access it within it. And I think there's three different really core aspects to this, is you need the grassroots engagement in the first place, you need people to want to come in and engage with heritage. So you've got to start out with that, and then you've got to keep the attraction there to keep them going. And you, you've also got to make sure that they promote and grow through it too. Right, that's me done. <laughs>